right anajulikana kama Masio Njura na Kibao Thula Sizwe uh, zikiwa zimekatika 30 kenda dakika baada ya saa kumi. thank you very much uh, George ambaye amekuwa hapo na akatuandalia taarifa za MBC Alasiri before we went uh, for news there is this topic that i was discussing na nikawa nikiuliza what is it uh, that imeingia wanadamu such that a country in the world can legalize sex with animals it is something that has been done it is something that has been passed by the supreme court not just any other court but by the uh, supreme court in canada na so many people have uh, participated in that na wacha nisome baadhi ya rafa ambazo zimeingia hapa kabla ni mpishe mgeni wangu uh, nyerere nyakwarso unaniambia uko ndani ya show thank you very very much someone else here is telling me wangoi praise god hello my people perish for lack of knowledge and the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom so these people they are using their own eyes rather than the inner eyes with the holy spirit uh, Okay that is mother the drama very very true uh, tumekataa kutumia macho ya kiroho na we are using our own knowledge and understanding hi queen isera washabe uh, he he that action is an abomination before the lord according to leviticus 18 22 may god help us keep his statutes uh, and judgment and never of the law be passed in our nation in jesus name say hi to my family wakiwa stima line and uh, my bishop evans mohwana thank you very very much and on that note uh, tunamalizia mswada ambao tulikuwa nao katika awamu ya kwanza as i had promised you we will be having a guest in studio and he is already in studio uh, his name is jonathan all the way from the united states and before we even get to talk of uh, on our topic which is abortion what is your take on uh, some countries legalizing bestiality i esther it's amazing that you <laughs> brought up that scripture to uh-huh. me because i mean we're on the same same wavelength mm-hmm. i was just reading leviticus 18 as i was sitting in the room there waiting waiting for you to come uh-huh. i was reading that very passage mm-hmm. and that has been a theme because that passage you might think oh leviticus it's written for the it's levites it's written for the jews mm-hmm. as a matter of fact um that part especially that chapter 18 of Leviticus is mm-hmm. is talking not about the Jews it's talking secondarily about the Jews mm-hmm. but primarily about the Canaanites and the argument that Moses is making there if you follow Le- Leviticus 18 is that look you didn't get this land of Canaan because you were so good or oh, yeah. because you were better than the other tribes of of humanity mm-hmm. you i'm giving you the land of Canaan from i'm just paraphrasing God is saying through Moses I'm giving you the land of Canaan not because you were good but because the inhabitants of Canaan the Canaanites and by the way when God first promised it to Abraham 500 years before mm-hmm. Moses yeah. he wouldn't give it to Abraham at that time because he said the iniquity of the Canaanites is not yet full mm-hmm. so God is very patient and long suffering but then we come to Leviticus 18 and God says one by one by one by one these things are abominations mm-hmm. don't do these things that the canaanites did yeah one by one by one by one he lists particular things that really really you know there's sins and then there's sins that cause the land to vomit you out and mm-hmm. that's the word the bible uses it vomited them it out vomits you out vomited the people out of the land uh-huh. and specifically moses said now don't think you're special and even christians should pay attention to this because uh those things the apostles tell us that those things that were written for the jews were for an example for us mm-hmm. it's a specific apostolic instruction we're to pay attention because it's an example for us not to imitate their disobedience mm-hmm. and moses said if you do what the canaanites do if you sleep with your neighbor's wife and call and say it's nothing mm-hmm. if you sleep a man with a man a woman with a woman a man with a beast a woman laying down with a beast and mm-hmm. it goes through these things and it connects to what we plan to talk about because it also talks about sacrificing your children to demons to mm-hmm. idols specifically Moloch mm-hmm. but a demon or an idol by any other name is still a demon uh-huh. and an idol Un- under whatever name satan masquerades satan is satan mm-hmm. you get my point yes. and so this is probably the most one of the most relevant passages in the world right now in the old testament is leviticus 18 not just for the jews all right not just for the jews mm. 
it is for it cuts across mm. every other person and these are the sins that the bible talks of uh, they will be vomited yeah and be- the people uh-huh. The people first in line for that is important for us to remember judgment begins with the household of God. Mm-hmm. So these people who, who don't name God, who don't claim to know God, you know, they've, okay, all men are without excuse, we're yes. told in, in mm-hmm. Romans. Mm-hmm. But there's a sense in which those of us who profess to know Christ, we have a big responsibility, right. more than others. Uh-huh. Yeah. Wow. And that is how we wind up our topic for the first segment of the day. And it is biblical. I thank God that Jonathan has touched on it on a biblical perspective. It is 44 minutes and past four, and we'll be here with Jonathan until uh, quarter to six because we've started a little bit late. Welcome. On Thank you board. so much. Thank you so um, much, Esther. Maybe you can tell us your second name. I tried to mention it. Ah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's okay. I'm Jonathan William O'Toole. My second name is O'Toole. O apostrophe, capital T O O L E. It looks kind of like a Lua name, uh-huh. but it's not. Uh-huh. Uh, it's Irish name, and I'm with Fearless and Cherished Foundation, specifically uh-huh. a project called Project C. All right. All the way from the United States. Yeah, Fearless and Cherished Foundation is a, a local Nakuru NGO, okay. uh, founded by a Kenyan, oh. but I'm from the United States. My wife is a, a Kenyan, my uh-huh. daughters are, are Kenyans, okay. but I'm a U.S. citizen. Yes. All right. Welcome very much on uh, NBCI Radio. And today we'll be talking about abortion. Yes. When is this thing? I've actually seen your car is branded. I thought it is yours because of <laughs> the <is>. branding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it has it, a, it, the, the picture of a fetus mm. on, on it. I, I really didn't read the message. Uh, it's behind. the same the same one you're holding in uh, in your hand in the card I've, I've I am given. A person. I am a person. That, yeah. that was uh, the, uh, it's also the message on your your car. That's true on the outside. back. In fact, I took the outline of that baby, mm-hmm. and Esther is holding a card I've given her. It's actually a color photograph. It's not a Photoshop. It's mm-hmm. not a drawing. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, an actual photograph, the way they can do through the technology of, of, of photography now within the womb while the baby is alive, mm-hmm. they can take wonderful pictures. And Esther is yeah. holding one mm-hmm. only seven weeks from conception, so less than two months. Most women are just beginning to think I might be pregnant yeah. by seven weeks. You get my point? In, by seven yeah. weeks, this is how the, the, the fetus looks like. Yes, yes, yes. You can see oh. through. But This is a full baby. In fact, it's a beautiful, a beautiful child. What we think of as the human form is mm-hmm. already, already fully right. present there. Why, yeah. why is this uh, very close to your heart? Why are you doing this campaign of uh, say no to abortion? Well, how do how do I how do I attack this? <laughs> <laughs> I, when I was seventeen years old. Mm-hmm. Let me step back a little further. When I was when I was eight years old, there was a, a move to resist abortion in the United States of America. And we were really trying. People were even chaining themselves to clinics Mm -hmm. and and trying to block the ladies from going in there and trying to beg them not to kill their children after we legalized abortion. Mm -hmm. And I was, I caught uh, the tip of that, of that spear uh, in the, in the late uh, 1980s. And I was at the clinics with my family and with my church. Mm. I remember I was standing next to a small girl and we were holding a poster of these innocent babies who had been thrown in the trash, dead babies killed by abortion. And it was really affecting me. And someone drove by, screamed at us, threw a bottle, the bottle broke. I'll never forget that day. Mm. Uh, Fast forward to when I was 17. I was working at a dog kennel for these high-bred dogs. Dogs, A very big one from Japan called an Akita, a very fierce kind of a dog. And I was taking on our national holiday to feed those dogs. And to make a long story short, I mistook one of the dogs that I knew for the one that was in the cage. And it was one that didn't know me. Mm. You can see the scars on my arm here. Not the ones from Uh my accident the other Mm. day, but Mm -hmm. the very deep ones. Mm -hmm. That dog, I was all alone. And he grabbed my arm and he pulled me into that cage. He was very big. Mm -hmm. And he chewed my arm down to the bone. My artery actually went in between his fangs. It's only the reason I didn't die by the grace of God is because his art, the artery went in between his teeth mm-hmm. instead of piercing it. Mm-hmm. So I didn't have that arterial blood. For many long minutes, I fought with this dog. And I finally got away. I walked to safety where there was a phone. I mm-hmm. called. The ambulance came. From that moment, okay, I felt like, and when I got out of surgery and when I came out and as I began to recover the use of my arm over the next year, many surgeries... Mm-hmm. I I felt like I began to empathize with the child in the womb who has no one to protect him when they're reaching in for these surgical abortions with forceps to tear off his arm or to tear off his leg or to rip apart his body. And that's what they do in a dilation and curatage. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. abortion mm -hmm. is is one particular type. Um, and so the child is completely defenseless. You can see in the videos of them, the child will try to swim to escape. Yeah. And I felt in that moment, when I was stuck in that cage with that dog, I didn't have a gun, I didn't have a knife, yeah. I didn't have any means to dispatch that dog. Mm -hmm. You know, just, just these fleshy hands we human beings yeah. have, no claws, mm -hmm. you know. What good are these teeth against a dog? Mm -hmm. So I, I, really, I really felt like God got a hold of me. He gave me a gift by having that near-death experience. Mm -hmm. I was able to empathize with those who have fallen into the jaws of death. Mm -hmm. And so I, God really commissioned me at that time in my heart that I should speak up for these people. And one verse of the Bible in particular um, jumped out at me from Proverbs, mm -hmm. the Proverbs of Solomon, chapter 31. Most people think of Proverbs 31 as the, the chapter which is about a woman. Mm -hmm the godly woman, the Proverbs 31 woman. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it is. But the first few, the first eight, uh, eight to ten verses of that proverb are actually directed toward the young man mm -hmm. by his mother, the mother of King Lamuel. And it's specifically Proverbs chapter 31, verse 8 says, O my son, open your mouth for the dumb, for those who cannot speak for themselves. Mm -hmm. Open your mouth, judge righteously and plead the cause of those who are appointed to be destroyed. Mm -hmm. And I realized when I saw that verse, it jumped out at me. These children in the womb who have been slated to be aborted, mm -hmm. whether it's been legalized or whether it's an illegal back alley abortion, they fit that description perfectly. They have been appointed to destruction. And a newborn infant can at least cry out, mm -hmm. can at least, can at least if, if he's been left in a ditch there, maybe someone can hear. I know someone mm -hmm. who was found in a trash can. He's alive today, a grown man. Mm -hmm. But these children in the womb, in this antenatal condition, they don't have a voice unless you give them a voice, unless I give them a voice. And so that's kind of how God got a hold of me mm -hmm. and put that in my heart. So you, you are, you know, many politicians say they are the voice for the voiceless. Mm. So for you, you will say you are the, a voice for the fitters. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the literal voiceless, mm -hmm. the literal voiceless, because uh -huh. the, normally the politicians are talking about people who actually do have a physical voice. Yes. Mm -hmm. In this case, it's very literal. Mm -hmm. It's very literal. And I, it's not only me. I'm, I'm calling upon the people of God to recognize that there's a principle at work, a biblical principle, mm -hmm. reaping and sowing. And if we don't, if we don't give a voice to the most defenseless members of the body of Christ, mm -hmm. or at least potential members of the body of Christ. If we treat them like we can just shrug off, say, yeah, I'm against it, but shrug off their need for a defense. Mm -hmm. The preborn deserve the same defense as the born. Mm -hmm. And if we don't give it to them, especially people who are hearing this message right now, you can't have an excuse anymore. Mm -hmm. If we don't speak up for them, mm -hmm. no matter what their circumstance, no matter who fathered them, you know, we don't punish the innocent for the crimes of the guilty. And if we don't become the voice for them, and yet we claim we know God, then what happens on that day when uh, a crisis comes to our family or to ourselves as individuals or to our nation or to our tribe? And then, and then we feel helpless. We feel like our political leaders have failed us mm -hmm. or our church. Mm -hmm. You know, those human institutions fail us. And we get on our knees. We cry out to God, help us. Mm -hmm. My God, my deliverer, deliver us. Yeah. And yet if we stopped our ears to these defenseless children, will he listen mm -hmm. or will he stop his ears? Mm -hmm. I'm asking people to consider that. God is merciful. God is forgiving. But at a certain point, if we don't protect the most defenseless and these most innocent children, who are we? Who all are right, we? All right. I know many, many of the audience will argue out that there is no reason why you should abort. Mm. But Jonathan, there are those people who have gone through rape mm. and, and feel, they feel betrayed, they feel bad. Mm. And is there a need of giving birth to this child and hate this child? Well, I, okay, I'll say, I'll say no. There's not a need of giving birth to the child and hating the child. But there's, there is a fact that the woman who has been raped and who has conceived... Now, before I answer this, let mm -hmm. me step back and say this is less than 1% mm -hmm. of all abortions that yeah. occur. Mm -hmm. It's a very small percentage that occur as a result of rape and incest. Although we spend a lot of time talking about rape and incest, mm -hmm. this is a small minority. Most abortions are elective and have nothing to do with rape and incest. Having said that, having said that, it is... A biological and a physical necessity, the woman who is pregnant with the child, okay, mm. is going to give birth. She's either going to give birth to a dead child or a live child. 
Now, there are women who have given birth to a live child from rape or incest, Mm -hmm. and they've gone on to raise that child and love that child. If she can't, she can give it up. But there's no evidence on this earth that there's any... A healing or any or any uh, the only thing that can possibly come out of it is a misdirected vengeance yeah. because there's no healing that there's no psychological healing no mm-hmm. certainly no spiritual healing mm-hmm. and no physical healing that mm-hmm. comes from aborting a child because of the sins of the father all right yeah. that is Jonathan in studio we have uh, six minutes to five we'll be back after this commercial break <laughs> Isaiah 60 verse 1 Ondoka angaza kwa kuwa nuri yako imekuja na utukufu wa Bwana unaangaza juu yako It's time to wash ndivyo hivyo basi kumbuka kesho mida ya saa kumi nitakuwa na nakuru live worship team and uh, we'll be here talking about worship it is an event that will be happening here in Nakuru but right about now I have in studio Jonathan all the way from the US and we are talking about abortion and we've said it is illegal and we are speaking for the little voiceless those people those fitters uh, the many at uh, uh, times we we are bought for weird reasons because uh, many people do not have genuine reasons there are others who will abort just to remain girls mm-hmm. there are others who will abort uh, because they think uh, they want to have a better life or mm-hmm. they think they cannot be able to raise these children people have very different reasons as why to abort but the question is where did this thing about abortion originate from because some time back it was not as common as it is that is true that is true it's it's become more in the open and it's become more common especially as western societies Mm -hmm. societies like my country the usa have legalized normalized and now people even celebrate abortion there really yes yes there people are say wear t-shirts that say i'm proud of my abortion it's a movement it's 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 the you know it's the far um let me say disintegration of the feminist movement Mm -hmm. is to actually you know enjoy and promote and almost worship abortion it's very very thinly veiled when it's veiled at all um demon worship really Mm -hmm. and human sacrifice is what it is just like we were reading about in leviticus 18 Mm -hmm. by the way on a side note romans chapter one if if people are uncomfortable you shouldn't be as a christian with with the old testament you Mm -hmm. should you should pay attention to it Mm -hmm. and interpret it correctly but romans chapter one paul also talks about those sexual abominations Mm -hmm. and that they come from that place where people make the decision not to honor god as god and then he turns them over to a reprobate mind so the influx of the sexual revolutions through Western society, first in France in the 1700s, then uh, Russia, another big one would be Russia in the 19-teens, the Bolshevik Revolution, uh, also with the Nazis to a certain degree. And then the 1960s in USA and UK was a huge sexual revolution. Mm-hmm. Obviously, all these sexual revolutions that pushed Christianity and propped up atheism and in many cases, they, they killed lots of Christians. I think the Soviet Union and the communists killed more Christians. I'm talking about born people now, not unborn people. Then I think all of the persecutors of Christians in history up to the 20th century. Okay, But that same move came with the Bolsheviks with a sexual revolution. You can have sex with anyone you want, they would say. They actually had a thing called the glass or the cup of water theory. You should think no more, they said about having intercourse with another person than you would about taking a drink of a glass of water, Mm -hmm. like you brought me in there earlier. Mm -hmm. Well, it failed so miserably in Russia, that, and it caused so much chaos and confusion that even Vladimir Lenin, who was leading the Bolsheviks at that time, had to walk it back. He said, you know what, it was a nice idea, Mm -hmm. but how many men do you know who would like to drink from a glass of water that 30 men just put their their mouths on you get my point yeah. so it doesn't work it doesn't work and it leads to what paul says in romans 1 people begin to do those things which are not convenient like what we talked about the um having you know sex with animals men with men women with women and also this thing of killing 
killing our own children. So as a result of these sexual revolutions, there became a, 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 there's always been a demand for abortion, okay? Mm. People always want to kill other people because other people get in their way. And it's always been easy to do it with a child, relatively easy, because, you know, maybe people don't even know the child is there. Mm. Again, the child doesn't have a voice. So yes. it, the child in the womb has historically been the easiest murder victim in history. Mm. But the demand increased exponentially after these sexual revolutions because obviously when you have all those rules and laws and customs and culture that was holding people back from acting like animals and people have a revolution and throw it off, mm -hmm. now there's going to be a big boom in unintended pregnancies of people you, you know that you're pregnant of, that you don't love, that you don't want to see anymore. And so in response to that demand, instead of repenting and saying, hey, we did wrong, you know, we shouldn't have done this, they pushed to legalize abortion. And the U.S. Supreme Court did it in 1973. Mm -hmm. But prior to that, people like Margaret Sanger, the founder of Planned Parenthood, which also has a hub in Nairobi. By the way, Nairobi in Kenya is being used as the launch pad mm -hmm. for legalizing abortion around East Africa. And Africa in general It's an important, as you know, as a Kenyan, an important key city and region of Africa yeah. and, and, our, uh, and the ports and everything. So Kenya is very much the keystone mm. to all of East Africa from yeah, their perspective. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. So what they're doing is, okay, the, the history of it is people like Margaret Sanger around the turn of the uh, 19th to the 20th century began to, to push uh, for contraception, first of all, and then for abortion. And most of these organizations, like Planned Parenthood Federation International, mm -hmm. began by saying abortion was wrong. Yeah. Uh, even uh, Marie Stopes, who was a contemporary of Margaret Sanger, began by saying abortion was wrong. Mm -hmm. But step by step by step by step, these people and these organizations began began to change. Yeah, Their heart was all along eugenicist. And let me talk about this thing called eugenics. Margaret Sanger and Marie Stopes, and when I say Marie Stopes, there's an organization the, the called Marie Stopes. Mm. I'm talking about the person mm -hmm. after whom they named that organization. Mm -hmm. I'm specifically talking about her. Every time you hear me mm. in this broadcast say Marie Stopes. She mm. was a human being. She died many decades ago, but she was very influential, exactly like Margaret Singer was in the USA, mm -hmm. in the UK, which colonized your country mm -hmm. uh, and mine. Uh, it was Marie Stopes. And <clears throat> she was an admirer of Adolf Hitler, and what she and Margaret Sanger, excuse me, <clears throat> and Marie Stopes and Adolf Hitler all had in common was a pseudoscience, which was taken very seriously by many wealthy people at that time. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice a bit. <laughs> um, it was called eugenics. Nowadays, it is publicly uh, disclaimed as a science and it has been it has been uh, disproven it is not a legitimate science but it still has a lot of influence many people still believe it but they're not out in the open about it the way they were mm. decades ago but eugenics is that idea that you know because of evolution they they push evolution and they say not only is it monkeys and men and other species that are moving but even within the human race mm -hmm. there are these tribes and if evolution is true, this is not me talking, this is yes. eugenics. Mm. And eugenics says if evolution is true, then some of the tribes must be the ones who are advancing. Mm. And some of the other tribes must be the ones, are you getting me? Mm. The ones being left behind in the story of evolution. So it's the logical consequence of humanistic evolution. So what happens is they they began to conclude, okay, well, who is it? Well, probably the Germans, you know, Adolf Hitler. And, mm. and Marie Stopes agreed with him. She wrote love letters to him. It's a matter of uh, historical record mm. um, because they were on the same page. Who is the master race and who are the races who are being left behind? And what they all agreed on, they don't talk about it publicly like they did back then, mm. but they wrote volumes about it back then. What they all agreed on, they would quarrel, is it Arabs, is it Jews? But everyone agreed the Africans are the ones at the bottom, okay, or very near the bottom. So these people are... And they were not shy about talking about this. Yes. Just a Google sh search mm -hmm. and just a little bit of research will show volumes of literature. In periodicals, they were very proud of it. They were saying, we want to call uh, these races, which we consider to be the less desirable tribes of humanity. Well, it's a big lie. As Christians, we know of one blood. Paul said in, in the book of Acts on Mars Hill at the Areopagus, he said, I'm telling you, 
Gentiles, you Greeks, that God has made all human beings of one blood, yes. of one blood. We have the same parents. Mm -hmm. We have different gifts. We have different specialities. But we are of one we blood. Have one blood. Mm -hmm. So Christianity is in direct, direct confrontation with this science of eugenics. Now eugenics has gone soft. They don't, they don't tell you their philosophy overtly, but they still name... They still talk about these people who founded these groups. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it, it seems uh, the battle that we Africans are going through right now in, in matters of abortion have not just started right now. They started no, way, way back. That's correct. That's All right. Correct. But now how do we help this situation? Because it is getting out of hand. And I, I think uh, um, uh, sleeping around has become easy. That's true. It's a lifestyle. Mm. Uh, but people do not want to... To reap from what they sow. Mm. They just want it's to true. live a good life. And push the conse consequences aside. aside. And, you know, we have that scripture. You've reminded me of it, but I don't remember the, uh, the verse. But it says, be not deceived. Mm -hmm. God is not mocked. Yes. Whatever a man or a woman, it says man, but it also means all humanity, mm. yes. sows, that shall he reap. God is not mocked. Mm. Those things we push aside in God's universe. And we say, I'm not going to pay attention to that. I'm not going to repent. I'm just going to push it aside. It comes back to us. There's going to be a day of reckoning. So what do we do? What do we do? Well, I can only, I can give you the example of what we did in my country that has failed. Okay? Mm -hmm. We didn't resist. We didn't defend the preborn. We didn't speak out. When people, again, it keeps coming back to when people can't speak out for themselves, it's for us to speak out, oh, yes. to give them a voice so that their blood will not be on our hands and on our heads mm -hmm. in the day of judgment. But in fact... It's not just a um, pessimistic view that I want to give you. We can turn this thing around, especially in Kenya. Well, and it begins in the heart. It begins with us training young people to think about the consequences of what they're seeing on media and the different voices they're hearing, especially from different NGOs, groups that come from the West that say, oh, we're promoting women's rights, freedom. It always comes with a candy coating, a sugar coating. But underneath that, there's a different agenda. So training p young people to think critically, especially Christian young people, to test what they're hearing, to think, what's the end of this? And also pointing them to the example of the collapse. I think people don't know because BBC covers it up. Uh, many of the or news organizations cover it up. Mm. But Western society is collapsing. Demographically, we are collapsing. We have too many old people, not enough young people. Mm. Militarily, we are out of control for no reason. It's been in the news all this week. Mm. Uh, my country is right on the brink of confrontation with another nuclear power. That's yeah. Russia. Mm. This is a side topic, but it's relevant because, again, in Romans 1, when we begin to push God out of our conscious as an individual, as a family, as a tribe, as a, as a nation, nation mm. God makes us start to do, as he doesn't force us to do it, but he, as he pulls away, he turns us over to that mind where we start to do, just like a drunk man. You see a drunk man walking down the street, he thinks he's invulnerable, he thinks nothing can hurt him, he might even pick a fight with a man twice as big as him, mm. because his, his reason is corrupted. He might even pick a man with a, a fight with a man that has a gun mm -hmm. or a panga. My point is that it's a matter of life and death for us mm -hmm. to communicate to the young people, to teach them to think about the traditions of their parents mm -hmm. and the traditions of the Bible that we've inherited. Not not to hold us down, to keep us from having fun, but for our protection. Uh -huh. Because sexu And to talk about sexuality. If we don't talk about sexuality to our children, to our brothers, to our sisters, and if parents don't talk to their children, these other people who don't love God are going to talk to them mm -hmm. about sexuality. Mm -hmm. We've got to talk about it. All right. So do we have a solution? Well, there's the legal solution, mm -hmm. which is fundamentally, it sounds simplistic, but we've really got to criminalize this. We've got to give them the same legal protection as much as is reasonably possible as born people have. Mm -hmm. And the problem is that these NGOs who are funded, who have this eugenics philosophy that I just described to you, that we touched on a moment ago, they've got a lot of money. They've got millionaires, people who are behind them. And they came in as the Constitution was being forged. And even though the Constitution says life begins at conception, constitutional lawyers here in Nakuru and around Kenya, have, have I've talked with them, and they've told me very clearly that that is a very weak phrase. Because legally, the reason you have rights, Esther, and the reason I have rights, mm -hmm. is not because I'm human or because I'm alive. My, my, your hair is human and alive, yes. right? Mm -hmm. My fingernail is human and alive. They're not Parsons. It's because... 
legally they need recognition as a person. So there's a loophole right now. Mm -hmm. Yes, abortion is a felony. Yes, it carries a criminal charge. But this loophole says, in the Constitution says, that if a trained health professional, doesn't even say a doctor, if a trained health professional sees that the health of the mother, not just the life, not, we're not talking about the life, but the health is at risk, they are allowed to do an abortion if in the opinion of that trained health professional. Mm -hmm. Who, first of all, who's a trained health professional? EMT, okay, mm -hmm. a first responder, a nurse, it doesn't say. And what does health mean? If you st Most people think, oh, it means the woman will die. Mm -hmm. Ectopic pregnancy, no, 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 no. This is an old trick. They've done it in the West, in the state that I'm from. Uh, they've done it all over the West. They always use that word health because when you really get down to it, psychological health, health can mean almost anything. Mm -hmm. So what they've given is for those doctors who have that mind, they want to make the cash or they have the eugenics agenda or both, mm -hmm. they've given them a loophole and it's difficult for the police. We need to close that loophole because the deterrent needs to be there. All right. 21 minutes past 5 p.m. This is MBC Radio 89.5. On our first segment, we have dealt with uh, literature. We have dealt with history. We have dealt with science. We've dealt with law, and we've seen there are loopholes in the law. But when we come back, what does morality and Christianity say when it comes to matters of abortion and as the body of Christ, what is it that we need to do? Because it is happening in our eyes, it is happening in the church, it is happening in our families. We cannot just say that this thing is happening in the bars or right. discotheques. This thing is happening right in front of our eyes. In the worship team, in the in success, uh, intercessors team, in the missionaries, it is happening in the church. That's true. When you come back, we shall be talking about that. Username investment brings to you the It, uh, it is 28 minutes uh, past 5. This is NBC Radio 89.5. I don't know where time is rushing to. <laughs> Remember, you can talk to us through our SMS number 0722619222. Uh, someone uh, here is telling me, Gashanja, I think the westernized thing is now into Kenyans. People think that they can abort any time and go away with it. Uh, someone else here is telling me, I think people should be let to do what they feel like. At the end of the day, God will judge them. But I think uh, to defeat what he is saying, we also have a responsibility. That's true. That's yes. true. When you look at the story of, of Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah, and look what you were talking about in, in the Supreme Court of Canada, the bestiality being legalized, we've seen in human society throughout history over and over and over what happens when people are just let. Okay, there's a, there's a balance. Yes, people have freedom, but, you, but when people are just let to do sexually anything they want, mm -hmm. It brings cruelty. There is a connection. It brings abuse. It brings cruelty. And the integrity of a society, the whole legal structure begins to fall apart. And those, and that thing that we see in Romans chapter 1, again, I encourage everyone, pay attention to Romans chapter 1. It's mm -hmm. the context for all of Romans. It really, if you're a Christian and you don't pay attention to what Paul is saying in Romans chapter 1, that is the story of humanity that he's giving us there. It's a warning and it's also a history. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, so we can't, we can't just let people do anything they want, or we won't have a society. Mm -hmm. We won't have a culture, and we have no religion. We have no Christianity. Another verse I was looking at during the break, Psalm 127. It's a famous verse. Uh, chapter 127, verse 3. Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Mm -hmm. So here we have God saying, you know, children don't just come from you doing what you want. They come from me. Yes. And I think that is, regardless of the circumstances. Regardless of yeah. how you found that, uh, you've gotten that kid. Because, you, exactly. Because you see, even in the lineage of Jesus Christ himself, who do you have? Rahab the harlot. Yes. You have also Solomon who's conceived mm. of the wife that David had and called Bathsheba. And why did David have that, that wife? because of adultery and murder. Now, God punished him for that adultery and murder, and that child was killed. Mm -hmm. See, God has the right to do abortion. It's not us. Mm. Whether he aborts 
you mm-hmm. or me in my in my thirties yes. or forties. And he can abort you at any age. He's the creator. He's the abortionist. Mm-hmm. It is not us. Mm. And the idea that we are 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 going to take to ourselves that godlike power, to say, Lord, you're giving me this child, but I'm telling you, you made a mistake. It's not the right time. Mm-hmm. And then. That's bad enough in and of itself. But mm. then on top of that, to continue to call yourself a Christian is, is the real abomination. We've got to back away from that and we've got to repent. Because Christians are constantly, you know, we're constantly saying, and I want God to bless you. I want God to bless this country, the city of Nakuru and Kenya. I want, I want to be blessed myself. Mm. Yes, God, bless me. Mm. But people are normally, when they're saying, bless me, mm. they're thinking of material things. And then when the child comes, at the time they didn't plan for it, they say, ah, this is not the blessing mm-hmm. I want. Another car would be nice. Yeah. Another house would be nice. Some money would be nice. But this child, but think about this. Mm. When that car is just rust and burned, when that, when that house is not remembered anymore, when that money is gone, mm. that person will go on and on and on and on forever with God. Mm. Human beings are eternal in that way. Mm -hmm. So every child is God trusting you as a man or a woman with this eternal soul. Do you think the church is doing what it's supposed to do when it comes to matters of uh, our social life? Because abortion is out of our social life. Mm, It's true. Is the church doing enough? Let me say, in my my country, for many years, the statistics have borne out that that evangelical Christians, and that's the the church that I grew up in, I'm an Orthodox Christian now, but I'm afraid it's probably the same even for Orthodox Christians, we have the highest rates of divorce and abortion. Um, Certainly not lower than other demographics. Mm. so, So no, the answer is no. Judgment begins with the house of God. We've got to clean up our house, and you see... Really, the Bible is the history of God being patient, calling his people to repentance, but fundamentally before God would judge the Ninevites or the the Babylonians or the Assyrians, yes, he will judge the heathen, the people who don't believe in God, but always first comes those people who bear the name of God because they're supposed to be the example. So no, no, we are not. We are failing, and we're failing our children by keeping quiet on this issue of sexuality. Some of it's embarrassing, especially we talk about these perversions. But this is not something that we mm. can stand in the pulpit and talk about. Well, there are other, there are other forums. Yeah. Imagine this is an African setup. Mm. On Sunday, uh, I being the pastor, people will expect me to talk about the love of God, the blessing, mm. uh, every other thing. But how will it be taken if I stand there to talk about abortion and people's social lives. I, th- I think people need to wake up and, mm-hmm. and, and look at their Bibles in Corinthians. I believe it was Corinthians, Paul, you know, just quickly deal with, deal with the issue, deal with mm-hmm. it directly and clearly. Paul said, these, some of these things that you people are doing, it's shameful even to talk about them. Mm-hmm. But then Paul talked about him. He said, there's a man in the Corinthian church who has uh, taken his father's wife after his father died. This is wrong. Paul said, even the pagans don't do that. And Paul said, Get him out of the church until he repents. Mm. You know, mm. I, I'm paraphrasing now from my memory. Yeah. But mm. Paul said, deal with this seriously. Try to bring the brother back. Try to get him to repent. But fundamentally, Paul talked about it. He dealt with it. We don't have to dwell on it longer than we need to. But the mm. children need to see us, mm-hmm. especially the young people, mm-hmm. to see us look. Because we can't just relax and allow the culture to, um, to, to do our work us. for us. Mm-hmm. Because the culture is falling apart at the seams. Mm-hmm. Too many voices. Too much media. They need to look at us. So many activists. Mm. Everywhere. From a whole spectrum, from every direction. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And even these people coming with money to children who need money and, and bringing a big seduction. Mm-hmm, okay, mm-hmm. Abortion is tied in with that too, yes. with the gayism and things like that. Mm-hmm. They're connected. It's weird. You would think if they wouldn't be connected. They're very connected. Mm-hmm. They're very connected. Mm-hmm. So w- whatever taboo is keeping us from addressing the things that are real is not from the Holy Spirit. Mm. It's not from the Holy Spirit. I want us to go back to the traditions of our fathers. I don't want to overthrow and be a revolutionary. But when those taboos get in the way, when they get in the way of us connecting with the young people and, and, and clarifying these things, you know what, let's, let's find a forum and we talk with them. If it's not on Sunday morning, it can be Sunday night. Mm-hmm. Let's be serious and let them know sexuality. This is all revolving around sexuality, mm-hmm. all these issues. Mm-hmm. 
because human beings are, are created that way, except for the few of us who have the gift of celibate chastity, okay, mm -hmm. um, and not being married. And that's a gift from God. Jesus was very clear. But the vast majority of men and women, we, we revolve around the libido, at least for the first half of our lives. Yeah. And it's very important to us, and it's a gift from God. When I go to secondary schools, it's one of the first things I usually say. I get them to I say, repeat after me, sex is a gift from God. Mm -hmm. So if we talk about it in those beautiful terms that the Bible uses and talk about the joy of it, we'll lead them to the treasure of their sexuality. Mm -hmm. And this thing of having your cake now, you know, and this exploitive type of sexuality with all the pornography through these smartphones and the internet right now, the children are seeing it. It's for us to, to give them those distinctions. We started the show, uh, by the time we were starting, you said you were a, par a parent. Mm. And uh, it is sad that uh, some of the parents are the ones who are leading their children to do this mm. because they feel this child will bring shame to my family. Mm. Uh, this child is very young. They give their own reasons mm. as to why. Mm. Yet they're in charge. They are born again. Well, I, I think that's why it's so important for us to, to talk like we are now. Mm -hmm about these things, about these things, because the, one of the, one of the, I said this morning uh, on, on the television program, one of the, the modus operandi of God throughout the scriptures is to take those things that Satan has, those shameful things that sh Satan has been doing. And in the Jewish culture, even in, even in, I think, most cultures, but especially in the Jewish culture, there was nothing, no more shameful way to die than to be hanged on a tree. Yes. Okay? Mm. So, uh, the, all the way from the Old Testament, the things, the shameful things that uh, Joseph's brethren did to him, and, and the shameful thing that Ham did to his father Noah, right? And all the way through the scriptures, down to God himself, when he became a man, endured shame. As Christians, if we, if we don't know how to give the shame to God in a way that God can, and trusting Him to transform the shame into something good. Mm -hmm. You get my point? It yes. doesn't justify the wicked things or the sinful things that, that brought the shame. The, the, you know, the Jews and, and Pontius Pilate and Herod and everyone, everyone are, is held to account for what they've done, and Judas Iscariot himself. That, that's on the side point, what people have done. God's method of operation is to take those things that sin and those things, and when we give it to him, say, God, we failed. Mm -hmm. We repent. Take this. And he brings something good. That child conceived in the wrong way or at the wrong time, everything seems wrong, could be the child that does fill in the blank, that discovers something. Who knows? And even if it's just a normal average child, mm -hmm. that is a person who will go on and on forever. If we know the God of the Bible, that is our glory to be like our Father, to bring, to take those things that are pregnant with shame and to, and to by the power of the Holy Spirit, take evil mm. and turn it for good. All right. Is there hope for those who have maybe been through this process? Mm, surely, mm -hmm. surely, surely. Look, look at King David. Uh, later on in the Psalms, after he, after he had repented, but when he was really, really expressing his repentance, I don't remember the particular Psalm, but he, but he talked about, create in me a clean heart, O God. Mm. Renew a steadfast or an upright spirit in me. Cast me not from your presence. Re restore unto me the joy of your salvation. Very famous Psalm. And he talked about the reason why God had allowed this to happen, so that sinners would be converted. David killed someone. Make no mistake, if you've gone through the process of abortion, unless you're a retarded girl, mm. uh, you know, a development, developmentally disabled, handicapped person, or very underage, you know, you've committed murder in the eyes of God. Yes. David did too, okay? You're not the only one. Mm. There, are, there are murderers in the Bible. There are murderers right now in the kingdom of God. There are people in prison right now who love the Lord, who are your brothers and your sisters. I visited uh, a women's prison near Nakuru here mm. a few months ago. We brought them some gifts. I met beautiful, wonderful ladies who love the Lord. Some of these ladies killed their husbands. Yes. You know, the, the point is, of course there is hope. That's why Jesus died. Mm -hmm. That's why the blood of Jesus is there. Mm -hmm. it's so that sinners would be converted. Okay? But there's no way around it. There's, there's a necessary ingredient. That is repentance. That is repentance. You can't sidestep repentance. You can't sidestep confession. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a woman hundreds of years ago in my church we call her St. Mary the Egyptian as opposed to uh, not St. Mary the mother of, of Jesus yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Mary the Egyptian was a very famous prostitute in Egypt mm. 
And she didn't know anything about Christianity. I won't give her whole story. It's too long. Sometimes I tell it at schools. My point is that, that she came out of uh, abandoned. Her spirit was abandoned to prostitution. She came out of it. She pulled out of it, and she became one of the most powerful people in leading people to Christ. Those things which are your shame and your weakness are the very things that if you will simply, humbly yield them to God in confession and humility, God will use them for good things. Mm-hmm. It is 41 minutes past 5. Uh, this is MBC Radio 89.5 or 7226192 Triple two is uh, our SMS number. It is a count. Ni MBCI Radio. Right, uh, we come back uh, to our topic uh, this afternoon where we are talking uh, about abortion. And uh, uh, Jonathan has. Is it your NGO or it's some, your partnering? Well, I'm, I'm partnered with, I, I work with Fearless and Cherished mm-hmm. Foundation, okay. and, and the, our project is called Project C, and that's an acronym, S-E-E, mm-hmm. for Stop Exporting Evil, especially directed to those Western voices that mm-hmm. are trying to, to push this, legalize abortion, this mm-hmm. genocide of abortion, mm-hmm. and it, that's really what it is. It's a class of people, a genus of people that has been singled out to be killed. Mm-hmm. So we're, we're directing that voice to them and saying, hey, you, stop exporting evil. All right. Evil. There is uh, this movement, I am a person. Yes. What is it about? Okay. Those words were chosen very carefully. My friend Rick Ellis in uh, Texas came up with that, that slogan. And it, it, it really is something inspired. Because uh, if you recall, when, when Moses was speaking with, um, in the Bible with, with the burning bush, the bush that was on fire but not consumed in the wilderness, and he took his shoes off, and, and he was commissioned by that voice to go deliver the people, right? And then Moses said, okay, you're sending me. Uh, who shall I say has sent me? And he said, tell them, I am. I am that I am has sent you, okay? So when we say, I am a person, and we put it on the picture of that innocent child, yes, number one, we're trying to give that child, that beautiful child, seven weeks from conception, a voice. His voice is saying, hey, look at me. Look at me. I'm someone. I'm a person. Secondly, we're trying to subtly and also ov- overtly demonstrate to people that the great I am himself, Yahweh, the great I am. I love that Esther, is it Esther Wahome song? Uh, Yahweh, the great I am, the one I magnify. That that one, that mighty Lion of Judah was not ashamed to become a person. And you know, he could, God could have made him the way he made the first Adam. Oh, yes. We call the, Jesus the second Adam. Mm. But the first Adam was made as a fully formed grown man, okay? As far as we can see from the Bible. But the second Adam deliberately came through a woman. Because you know, a woman had a big hand, just like man and the serpent, but a big hand in bringing death and sin into the world. So it was for woman also to have a big part to play in bringing redemption into the world. God did that on purpose. And in doing so, God sanctified, if it was not clear before, God sanctified all those forms of development from fertilization up to the age I am now, up to old age, you Mm -hmm. see? Because God was not ashamed to be found in the form even of a single cell when Mary's egg was fertilized, not by any man. She had never slept with a man, okay? but was fertilized by the Holy Spirit. So God, when we worship God, because he's timeless, we're worshiping that baby in the manger at Mm -hmm. Christmas. We're used to that. But guess what? We are also worshiping that unborn child, as John the Baptist did when his mother Elizabeth saluted uh, the mother of Jesus, and he leapt in the womb. Mm -hmm. So in that passage, for example, we have a baby in the womb worshiping God, who is also in the womb at that moment. Just imagine the implications of that. So when we see a child in the womb, this is not 50% in the image of God. This is not 1% a person climbing, climbing, climbing up to 100% at that magical moment of birth. Nonsense. There's nothing like that. From the moment of fertilization, the DNA is a specific, unique individual, not the father, not the mother, any more than you are, or I am. I'm not my father. I'm not my mother. We are related, but we are different. What? Parsons. Mm. Parsons. So that's why we said, I am a person. Mm-hmm. The other big motto we have is that the preborn deserve the same defense as the born. Mm. Wow. I, I, I just love this, I am a person. I wish uh, <laughs> radio could, uh, could be like TV that people will have to see this image. Because I'm imagining 
at seven weeks, if someone is trying to have an abortion, this child will try to run away. It's really true. And, and because this is already human. Yeah, that's They already right. have feelings. That's right. It's 100% human from the moment of fertilization. Uh -huh. But yeah, seven weeks, most women are just beginning to realize that, yes. that, that they're pregnant. Mm -hmm. And by then, there's, as you can see on the picture, the radio can't see, but there's eye, there's fingers. Mm -hmm. Anyone can Google. Uh -huh. Go to someone with a smartphone, type in uh, embryo, seven yeah, weeks. Close. You'll get a beautiful picture. Uh -huh. You'll see exactly what we're looking at. Wow. One issue I wanted to touch. Mm -hmm. Are we out of time? Hmm. Maybe in two minutes. Okay. Yeah. In two minutes, we can talk about uh, the people have the notion of there is safe abortion and unsafe and abortion. And there is an unsafe yeah. abortion. I, want to pierce but I think that. abortion is abortion. Yeah. Uh -huh. it, it always ends in the death of the child. There's mm -hmm. no such thing. Yeah. Mm. There is nothing. Mm. And the, the idea, what they're normally talking about is maternal deaths due to abortion. And you, I, I have had an alert set up for the past 10 years on my email account. And every time in the news, in any news agency, it comes up the word abortion and the word Kenya together or abortion in East Africa, I get an email, usually four to five times a week, and it's the standard, or it's this one, or it's that one. And there are all these, these groups are paying editorial boards to make news stories about, uh, because of the high, what they call the high the maternal high death yeah. rate. But stop and think about that. And it's true, we need to work to eliminate, we don't want people dying from mm. these things. Yes. But the answer is not to make abortion more safe, because you're killing a person. Mm. And when they say maternal death rate, they never stop and answer the question, Maternal means yeah. mother. It's the uh -huh. Latin word for mother. Mother of whom? Mm -hmm. They never answer in any of these articles that question mm -hmm. because she's the mother of the child she's about to kill. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, if you, Esther, got a grudge against me and I really stepped on your toes and I offended you deeply, uh, but I didn't commit a crime, you're not defending your life and you decided you had to kill me or I felt that way about you, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, the way people do every day, we've, there's never been a society on earth that eliminated murder. Does that mean that we should make it safer? Mm -hmm for Esther to kill Jonathan, mm. or for Jonah to kill Esther. Mm. Once again, there's ne never been a society on earth that eliminated rape either. We still criminalize it. Mm. We never eliminate it. It happens somewhere every day. Mm. But the fact that it happens every day doesn't mean that we should make it happen in, in, in a safe environment. You would say I'm a crazy person if I came to you today and I said, no, Esther, we should have these safe zones where men can safely re rape mm. a woman because he might be scratched, uh, his br her brother might come and mm. beat him. You see, mm -hmm. this is nonsense. You would, I should be locked in a room yes. for saying like that. Mm. The only reason they get we'll away with it. To a mental hospital. Yeah, a mental hospital. The reason they get away with it by saying, oh, abortions should be more safe because they are unsafe. Of course they are unsafe. Yes. You are trying to kill someone. Yes. Of course they are unsafe. Mm. That's what we are saying. It should never be safe to kill an innocent human mm -hmm. being. That is our final uh, note uh, this afternoon, or rather this evening, that there is no safe or unsafe abortion. Mm. Both makes you a murderer. Whether it's a man who's being involved or a woman. You know, many other times uh, that we think it is the woman who is being involved. Mm -hmm. And we, we erase the fact that there was a man. That's right. There That's is a right. man who financed. That's exactly correct. And uh, many other times, there are even married men who are doing this. That's right. Because they don't want to tarnish their family image. Mm -hmm. They don't want their wives to know. And uh, In fact, the, the fact responsibility is, is with the man. Just like yes. the Garden of Eden when he said, Ah, it's the woman you gave me. And God said, Uh-uh. Mm -mm. You, you're the one. Mm -hmm. The buck stops here, as we say in USA. <laughs> <laughs> That's what our president used to say. <laughs> so kama unatusikiliza msikilizaji leo tumekuwa tukizungumzia swala la kuavya mimba na tumezungumza na tukasema kwamba however you have done it whether you went to the hospital whether you took uh, pills uh, however you did it mtubu utubu mm. good repent <laughs> and uh, it does not make you I, I always tell women that it does not make you a, 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 a girl no it only makes you a mother for the dead of the dead dead child and, That's and a father of a dead, of a child. dead child but it it's just that people cannot go seeing that you are a mother but it does when god comes today mm. actually in heaven it is recorded that you're a mother and you're a father even before then as you mm -hmm. grow up through your life when you you will never forget when you see the child who would have been the same age mm -hmm, mm -hmm, as the child mm -hmm. that was killed yeah it, it, over and over and over don't take my word for it women have testified mm -hmm. it haunts them yes you don't want to live with that mm -hmm. four minutes to 6 p.m thank you very much jonathan for gracing our studios we are hoping uh, to have you more of you thank i'm you. hoping on saturday you'll be here 
I'll be here. All right. Yeah. Uh, tune in for Saturday. Uh, the youth show Wimbila Sifa with uh, Cynthia Gishiri. She'll be hosting Jonathan and they will be talking about homosexuality. I think so. I think All so. Right. Wild horses could not drag me away. Thank <laughs> you, Esther, so much. God bless you very, very much. I'll be back in a moment. It is a county